And we're back. Yeah. There's been a change. Yeah. Oh, wait. Let me. <laughs> we got an echo. <laughs> Mute that. Okay. Here we go. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, still figuring out how to use this thing. So, you know, we don't have um, the best audio today. Got, got new gear. We're still trying to figure it out. Yeah. So I got a new computer and. Uh, um, just went and opened our our DAW digital audio workstation. Yeah. And um, all the plugins that I've used for the podcast for the last, whatever, two, over two years, almost three years, um, are not working. So I got to look at that. That's what you get for getting your computer at home for freight. Yeah. <laughs> I got the same day delivery from the Apple store. <laughs> That was nice. Nine yeah. bucks. <laughs> They're like, you could have it. I ordered it, I think, at, uh, must have been, I think that was the day you went to the dentist, right? Yeah. So it was after you left. So it was like 3.30. It was like, you could have it between 4.30 and 6.30 for $9. I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Please. Sign me up. What's nine on top of uh, 4100 <laughs> I know. <laughs> you don't even notice it. <laughs> yeah. You could say it was 90. I would probably take it. <laughs> Uh, real quick, I want to thank our sponsor, Hayfla. Hayfla offers a wide range of products and solutions for the woodworking and furniture making industries from hinges and drawer slides to connectors and dowels, sandpaper, wood glue, shop carts, and everything in between. Exclusive product lines such as Lux LED lighting and Slido door hardware ensure that every project you create is built to last. Learn more at Hayfla.com. That's H-A-F-E-L-E dot C-O-M. You know, Hayfla needs a jingle. Yeah, we might be able to make that happen. Yeah. I um, uh, was talking to Ed and uh, Scott today about changing up the verbiage a little bit on this and um, and some other stuff that we won't talk about yet, but hoping to add another um, layer another layer of Hayfla to the show every now and then. Yeah. Which would be cool. We're big Hayfla fans. Yeah. You know who else is a big Hayfla fan? He's this guy. <laughs> He's a big K Fluff fan. A giant K Fluff fan. Yeah. Then we got this K Fluff fan, a robotic K Fluff fan. Only on channel one that's working. So we got to figure <laughs> out how to make that work on channel two. Oh, yeah. We haven't even unlocked a. a um, a drop of what this thing can do, I think. Yeah, that'll be fun. I mean, look, it's got one. Oh my god! No, I think it only shows three, but it's got eight, eight times eight, sixty-four different, you know, triggers you could do. I like the green button. <laughs> oh. <laughs> one man show oh, yeah <laughs> um so it's uh wednesday in the shop we've been doing some painting oh boy all day on our oh, i'm like who unlocked its front door that's our uh knockoff festool sanding pad yeah showing up uh, via amazon only 32 dollars yeah for a knockoff I know, but it's I think a new one fifty five or something like that. The, mm -hmm. the best tools. I don't know. I wasn't even looking at the price to be honest. I just wanted to try something different, just like on the off chance that the knockoff one's actually better. ETS one twenty five pad. I want to say it's forty seven, forty six. Yeah, there you go. They got one here for twenty seven. Maybe that's the one I ordered. I'm not sure. But it was, you know, that uh, next day delivery. I don't know about, you know, where all you guys are listening from, but um, here we now have like overnight delivery on Amazon. So I, you could order something and some of it's even same day. Yeah. Uh, which we didn't used to have before. Even though we live, you know, within a half hour of several huge Amazon warehouses, but we just got the next, like the overnight they call it where it comes between like 4 and 8 a.m um which is i mean it's handy 
And we're getting spoiled. Yeah. I mean, you hate to spend all your money at Amazon, but they sure make it hard to not. <laughs> I know. The evil empire. Yeah. So we just uh we just got back from Lowe's and Tractor Supply. Yeah, that was an adventure. Yeah, on the hunt for some good ratchet straps and uh safe yeah. to say that we didn't find any. No, it was pretty disappointing. The the best <laughs> was when we got into tractor supply and the shelves are stocked with the same exact brand yep. that we left Lowe's disappointed in. Uh-huh. Smart straps. Yeah. We're like, let's tactical. go to another store. Tactical ratchet straps. Tactical with the mock carbon fiber. Yeah. Well, the tactical had knurled, and the, <laughs> I don't know what they called the carbon fiber ones. Um, so, yeah. So, tomorrow morning, we're going to pick up. We finally found the compressor. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Quincy, seven and a half horsepower, three phase, 80 gallon stand up compressor. 22.6 big CFMs, CFMs, which is uh, plenty. Exactly what I've been looking for. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've been looking at at new, which is a big nut to swallow. You know, yeah. talking Oof. minimum thirty five hundred. Well, well, I mean, you could buy some bullshit compressor that you know you're not going to trust, but looking at a minimum of thirty five hundred for a new compressor. Is it, yeah, this one was, is it 35 or 36, 37? For plus, this one new? Yeah, yeah. 3,600. Plus tax. Uh, Well, we're tax exempt. Okay. So luckily we get off on that. But uh, free freight too, luckily. We're not luckily, we're not buying a new one, but uh, freight would be free. So you're looking at 3,600 bucks. This one, uh, we're getting it for 1850. It's only two years old. And honestly, the pictures, it looks... It looks brand new. Yeah. I mean, it. it's, there's not a speck of dust on it. I mean, ours, like the second day, you know, it, like it's like oil fumes and the dust is all caked on there. So I don't know, you know, the guy uh, that we're buying it from, he bought it. Oh, good. He marked it as pending. He bought it from a, uh, he's out in Pennsylvania, about an hour and 40 minutes away. He bought it from a company that, they had three locations, and I don't know, they were moving, or, yeah, I mean, look at the freaking yeah. thing. Where, Snarky Puppy, Pen, Pennsylvania? Where? Uh, Scuttleburg, <laughs> something, <laughs> Scapjack, something like that. Um, where, You know, geography's not, uh, not a strong suit. No. Um, but he, <clears throat> yeah, so he bought it from a company that had three locations, and I forget they were closing the one or moving it or something. And he said that they made like holsters and magazines for police departments and the government and whatever. So I guess they were working with Kydex and with, uh, I don't know what the hell the magazines are made of, some kind of polymer. Um, and this was a backup compressor. They had a big screw compressor and this was the backup, which only was used if the screw compressor was down, which you know, I can imagine probably, probably not all that happen. often. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got like the oil maintenance schedule is on there when they, you know, they change the oil in January and it's due to be changed again in June. I like that. I like people who keep records like that. Yeah. Like and when you're buying a used car. If it's a, uh, you know, a company that has three locations, then they're probably pretty well managed mm-hmm. and they probably made sure that, you know, I mean, look at it. It's so yeah. clean. Look. Yeah. I mean, nice. I don't know if the guy went and cleaned it, but my God. Even if he did, I mean, you could see there's no, there's no residue Nothing. of anything. Maybe there's a little bit of dust in there. Uh, I think that's just a reflection. Um. So yeah, I mean, we're, I'm excited. We were looking at Quincy's anyway. Oh yeah, that was, it was. 1A and 1B between that and the Emacs. Yeah. I would have really liked to have an Emacs. Yeah. Um, Quincy definitely has a more well-known reputation. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I put that thing up on Instagram and it was like, I don't even know how many, uh, two dozen people were like, you got to buy a Quincy. Like yeah. I've had one 
for 20 years and I bought one that was 50 years old and it still runs like, like it's brand new. And, um, yeah, we went, uh, and we checked out a new Ingersoll Rand, not really intending to buy it, but just to get to get a glimpse of the quality and everything like that. Yeah. A hunk of junk. Yeah. It was pretty disappointing. Yeah. I, I would, if you're in the market for a compressor <clears throat> and you're like buying something that you think is going to be industrial, don't buy an Ingersoll Rand because that thing was a joke. I mean, the DeWalt looked heftier and beefier. Yeah. Well, ask Timmy about his DeWalt. That just, <laughs> uh, sh- yeah, never mind. No. Don't say. <laughs> don't say anything yeah. about that. Because I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the situation is. You can ask him and maybe he'll tell you. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, the DeWalt looked way more hardcore. Mm-hmm. Granted, it was a seven and a half horsepower and the Ingersoll Rand was a five, but the the motor on the Ingersoll Rand was a WEN, which I've never heard of. No, a WEG. WEG. WEG, W-E-G, which sounds familiar, but, you know, made in Mexico. This has a, a ball door. Yeah. Is it a ball door or a Leeson? I think it's a ball I door. I think it's a ball door. A Reliant, ball door Reliant. Um, Three phase, which we wanted. 208, which, you know, it's got to be 208. Yeah. Um, 230 is, you know, it's not going to be good for the motor running at 230, which I don't, now I'm thinking, is that the problem with the table saw? Hmm. You know, maybe the, I think maybe the motor's bogging down and there's so much inertia in the blade. Yeah, it's it's stretching the belt. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know enough about, electric conversions me neither um but yeah so it's a 208 three-phase motor which is good we can run it on a smaller breaker we can use smaller wire be cheaper to get it hooked up um all those ancillary costs add up yeah oh yeah yeah like the emacs that we were looking at i think it needed like a because they didn't have any three-phase in stock no it needed like a 60 amp breaker (laughs) You're talking about number four wire. Oh. Number four wire is got to be two dollars a foot. Yeah, and it adds up quick. Mm-hmm. And you know, a six to three. Well, that would be a, that'd be a two pole, but those like the three pole hundred amp breakers that we had to buy were like a hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. So you know, buying a thirty amp um, three pole breaker won't be too bad. You know, we probably just will go to war. We go to war shower, pick that up. Yeah. Um, better check and see what kind of wire we have. Maybe pick up wire. It might, may, you know, might be cheaper rather than buying flexible conduit or trying to do the conduit ourselves to uh, just get cord. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the maximum length on that is. Um, yeah, you know, like how far you could run it. Yeah, that's it doesn't a good have question. to go very far. No, about what. Yeah. 10 it's feet, go, but it's got to go up. Up about three and then over. Yeah, no more. It's no more than 15 feet. Yeah. But even at $4 a foot, I think that 6.4 that we bought was only. Uh, that might have been $6 a foot. But that was some big stuff. Yeah. 6.4 is big. We have, I mean, we have a bunch of wire that's. uh 10 and 12, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure what what size wire. You got to go up to the electrical warehouse. Yeah. Although, because <laughs> our electrician had such good takeoffs. What size wire for yeah. 30 amp three phase? Yeah, we got a whole storehouse of miscellaneous electrical supplies. Oh, you only need 10 gauge wire. Oh, wow. Hmm. That's good. Yeah. I mean, if we get some pre-famulated uh, conduit pieces, we got plenty of conduit. Yeah. You only yeah. need probably half inch would work for that. Right, because it's just a single thing going there. We'll just bend the conduit over our knee. <laughs> I think that's how they did it. Yeah. <laughs> Here, you stand on this. <laughs> just need a helper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One that we're not paying. <laughs> Oh, man. Good. So, hey, that's great news. Number 10 yeah. wire. Um, Shit, piece of 10. It would have to be 
uh, 10 4. Because with cord, I learned the hard way that the ground is included in the number. Yeah. Unlike yeah. Romex, where, you know, 10, 10 2 Romex would have three wires on the inside. Mm hmm. 10 2 SJ or SVO or whatever, what SJO, I don't know what the hell the different ones are, but would only have two wires inside. And one of those would have to be the ground. Right. So we need something with four wires. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's probably, probably relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Compared to what we've been getting. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll have to go to war shower and make fools of ourselves again. <laughs> you know, everybody at the, at the supply houses have such an attitude. Yeah. But we get it at the, you know, more woodworking type places too. So it's like, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Like when we go to builders or whatever. Yeah. Builders isn't yeah. so bad. Dykes was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God. The guy was like, <laughs> yeah. Being a total prick. Yeah. It's like, you know, when somebody's being obstinate to be obstinate. Yeah. I'm like, listen, I know what the hell I'm talking about. Like, yeah. I, you don't, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And then the other guy at the desk, he's like, oh, how'd your guys move go? And the guy looks over, he's like, what? He's like, oh, yeah, I follow you guys on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Then he snapped to attention. It's like, yeah. oh, these aren't just some pickup truck, uh, yeah. you know, knuckleheads. Yeah, what was I asking for? Pre-finished plywood. Yeah. What you got? What do you need? What you got? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm looking for some pre-finished three-quarter inch pre-fin, two side. Well, what do you need? <laughs> I don't know what you have. <laughs> well, are you talking about like sanded? No, pre-finished. Well, a lot of times guys come in and they're, they're looking for sanded. I didn't say AC ply. Yeah. That would be sanded AC. I said pre-finished. Finish implies that there's a finish on it. Yeah, there's something on there other than wood. Right. Idiots. Oh, uh, yes. Nice being out in the world. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll leave tomorrow, probably around 6. Uh, get out to whatever, Sacklerville, whatever the Lucky hell it is. Puppy, Pennsylvania. Harleys, Harleysville? It's, well, he listed it at Harleysville, but it, the zip code was somewhere else with an S. Harleysville is, uh, I think that's who my uh, life insurance is through. Yeah, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. So we're taking my pickup. Uh, because it is too tall to fit in the high roof van, believe it or not. Yeah. Holy cow, right? Yeah. Um, it's, what'd you say, 74? Yeah, it's 74 without the little pallet. Right, and it's he's got it bolted to a little pallet, which is nice. Um, so he's got a forklift, I guess, or he's got something to get it in there. Skip yeah. pack. Oh, it was on Craigslist. Craigslist, skip pack. Pennsylvania. Do you have any additional info in there? What's that listing say? It says the model number, seven and a half horse, three phase, 80 gallon, two years old. Build date, 4 2021. Perfect condition with an exclamation point. And uh, he must have got that thing for a song. <clears throat> yeah. He probably bought out the whole, you know, he's probably one of those guys. I bought it. And it's just reselling it. Yeah. You know what I didn't check was what else he was selling. Oh, that's a good thing. You yeah. might have some others, other gear. Even just, I like to do a little recon, you know? Just see what these people are about. We're in the block, block he, studio death. Yeah, see if he's selling any, like, bondage gear or something like that. We want to <laughs> make Security sure. Security cameras and paper plates. <laughs> Don't turn your back. I've I heard about you guys. You <laughs> you talked about me on your podcast. Come on, Will yeah. Smith. Hmm. He's an old white man, though. Oh. oh, I did look. He was only thing. Other things that he had sold are these uh, Lista toolboxes, uh, tool which are nice. They're already sold yeah. though. Oh, for 1500 bucks. They're clean. Yeah. I like that because Chelsea takes care of his stuff. 
Yeah, or he's bu- you know only buying stuff that's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if he buys it and doesn't leave it out in a shed or something like that, and yeah. keeps it nice and clean. Pending. That's us. Yep, it's got you know the drain is uh, accessible, oh, whereas man. on every other compressor, it's like you got to bend over backwards to drain it. Um, so we could put a little tube, add a tube to the thing, and, yeah. and keep a whatever. Some kind of bucket or pail or yeah, milk container. Jug. Milk jug is a good. Uh, yeah, it's got that small, small opening at the mm-hmm. top, less splatter. Or uh, just like one of those one gallon chemical kind of bottles. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like a almost like a bleach bottle. Yeah. Um, that'd be good. I'd like to get one of those automatic drains at some point. Yeah, you know, if we would have bought new, we would have been in for a good five grand, probably. Yeah, yeah. Would have gotten the cooler and, mm-hmm. the, and the drain kit and the extended warranty. and they call that a fully packaged unit. Yeah, because that's how we roll. Um, they have like an uh, intercool- intercooler, aftercooler, some kind of cooler. Yeah. A Yeti cooler. Not like a dryer, but they have between the... The uh, pump and the tank is like a cooler, like a radiator, basically. And it cools the air down before it goes into the tank. Because that's, I, this, I just learned this within the last couple of weeks looking at compressors. That, that's why you get the condensation is because the air gets so hot from being compressed. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I, I mean, I, it's like one of those things I never even really gave much thought to. Like, I always thought it was just like taking moisture out of the air. Oh. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's got an intake, so it's sucking the air in, and there's moisture in the air, so it just gets stuck inside the tank. That's what I thought. So it's the heat. It's almost like distilling in there. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's pressurizing the air, and, and you know, when whenever you pressurize something, it makes heat. And it's probably rising to the top of the thing and then... Con- condensing. And, and then dripping down. Yeah. Must be really uh, mucky in there. Yeah, I think like the air is like 400 <clears throat> degrees or something when wow. it goes into the tank. Yeah, I never even thought of that either. Yeah. Man, we're going to have to clear the way to get that freaking thing back there. <laughs> we're going to need the forklift. I know. <laughs> nothing's nothing's that simple, is it? No. Does it have, I wonder if it's got like lift points on it. Well, it's on a pallet. Yeah, it's so on a could, tiny little pallet. We could get it over there on the pallet and then we'll have to put a strap around it to lift it up, I guess. Yeah. So now they got two listings for that. This is that same Ingersoll Rand. Yeah. Now there's two listings for it. That somebody else must be the guy's brother, Michael. Uh, You're in the market for a compressor and you're looking at this ingersoll rand in saddlebrook new jersey do not go look at it because we went up there that's another story uh and you know what's going to happen is we're going to pick this thing up tomorrow and then the market's going to be flooded with cheap compressors well this is a pretty good deal i don't feel bad about this at all no 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 it's and it's the compressor that we that we really wanted right one of the you know was in the top five for sure top Mm -hmm. probably top two two yeah um so was that yesterday uh man yeah i think it was oh, boy um yeah we saw that ad no it was monday it was monday was it yeah i don't know anyway ingersoll ran t30 popped up you know looked old but looked fine and uh you know got the guy down to 650 bucks like all right we're coming up there right now we shot, shot over to the bank, took out the money, drove to Saddlebrook, which is about an hour. And we get there, and man, what a junker. Piece of crap. No a, air filter rag a, wrapped around <laughs> it with like a hose clamp. <laughs> and just, you know, pipes. Like dangling. little, yeah, little copper line that's supposed to connect the whatever regulator to things. Just hanging, bent, totally kinked. And everywhere oil could escape, there was film and dust, oh, you yeah. know, you, so you could see that. Yeah, the pump was super crusty. 
had a, a balder motor or mm-hmm. a leeson i forget uh but you know the four wires was suspicious yeah i mean it might have started up and it might have run but it was it was a real heap yeah what do they call those cars not what jersey has an expression not dooleys dookies what what do you guys call beater Hoop, cars hoopties Hoop, hoopties yeah, yeah. It was, that was a hoopty compressor. Yeah. Yeah, that was like, you know, like an old Cadillac, like a big, you know, some big boat of a car. Like an El Dorado. Yeah. <laughs> Front wheel drive Cadillac. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, you hate to drive all the way somewhere. and But it was, it was not even close to considering. No, I would I have mean, been sick with worry if we were bringing that thing home. Yeah. And you know what? Now, we didn't even talk about what we did to my truck, but I would have been nervous driving that thing back, I think. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, seeing the size of it in person and the weight. and It might not even fit in the van. Yeah, I didn't think of that. That one seemed like it was maybe like a little bit shorter, but Mm -hmm. uh, they're still, they're big freaking compressors, 80-gallon tank. Yeah, eighty gallon on a pallet. Mm-hmm. So you know that raises it up six inches. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so what we did is since we have to take my truck because of the height um, of the thing, we went and got the straps. I don't know how we we diverged off of the strap thing. <laughs> uh, that's that's our style. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we we ended up going to what the hell's going on here. We ended up going to Tractor Supply and uh, and getting some straps there. They were the only ones that weren't strap smart simple, smart strap smart strap. Yeah, they're job smart, right? <laughs> <laughs> A subsidiary of smart strap. Yeah, they were cheap. They were twenty five bucks for four, and they seem they seem better. Yeah, a um, little bit less plastic. Yeah, they don't, but they don't have the flashy packaging. Mm-hmm. They don't say tactical on the packaging. No tactical straps. Um, so we grab those and, um, you know, he's going to, he's going to stick it in the back with a forklift and it's on a pallet. So that's good. The base will be, you know, should be, um, stable. Yeah. Like keep things from moving side to side because the back of the truck is only so wide. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can only fit four feet between the wheel wells and the pallet. It's gotta be, you know, around that size. Maybe thirty six by thirty six at the smallest. Yeah, when you look at the picture, you don't it's, get a full yeah, idea how big it is. It looks like it's it just this little, you know, this little compressor. Um, it's bigger than a person. Yeah, I mean the like, I don't think you'd be able to wrap your arms around the tank. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like if you were to try and bear hug it, because it's it's taller than I am. I'm I'm only like five ten. Yeah, it looks like the same size as the compressor we have. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the you know the pallet will keep it really from moving a lot back and forth at the bottom, but you know all the weights really at the top of this thing mm-hmm. for the most part. Um, it's a cast iron tank, but still, you got the motor up there, the pump, all the whatever electronic stuff. Um. So we got some two by fours that we can put front to back and then some ones that'll go side to side. So we'll kind of just like build a, a half a crate around it. Yeah. And um, then strap it down. Yeah. Strap the bejesus out of it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that should work out pretty good. Yeah. We'll be okay. Yeah. I drove from Austin, Texas to China spring once with a pair of uh, speakers that were so big. They had to go sideways across my little dots and pickup truck. Oh my god! <laughs> if I got going more than thirty miles an hour, the whole truck started <laughs> shaking violently, like sitting on the bed rails. <laughs> yeah, on the top of the truck. Oh my god. <laughs> so we went down like in the middle of the night. See, you could do stuff like that in the seventies, and you know, not, nothing happened. You can't get away with stuff like that now. Yeah. It's too much regulation, too much oversight. Yeah, we we had it good back then. I mean, people my age, we we were lucky. You sure about that? Yes, I am. <laughs> you sure about that? You sure about that? 
I'm very sure. I went to college for two thousand dollars a semester. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't even think about the student loans anymore. It just automatically comes out of the bank account every month. Just take my money. Yeah. No I mean, when I went to the new school, I mean, I paid seven hundred a credit. Mm -hmm. But like when I went to Arizona State, two thousand a semester. I mean, come on. Yeah. That it's. And that was 1980, 82. Um, we, things got screwed up. Yeah, you can say that again. They're getting worse. Um, so, yeah, hopefully it's an easy, easy pickup. Guy sounds nice yeah, enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll shoot out there in the morning, get back here. We got to finish painting all this crap we got in the shop. Yeah, we'll have some breakfast on the road. Yeah. Taco Bell breakfast. Mm. Might not be able to make it back to the shop. No. Yeah. We, I, I heard some, you know, speaking of education, I heard some really uplifting news today when we were in the, <laughs> running our errands. Yeah. <laughs> About the national uh, report card. Yeah. It made me proud to be a history major yeah. and a history teacher, <laughs> ex history teacher, of course, but uh, the lowest history <laughs> scores since the inception of the national report card. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, I tell you, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, the way they really, uh, you know, sort of whittle away at the curriculum. It it was mm -hmm. like that when I was a teacher and I used to get in trouble all the time because I, you know, didn't stick <laughs> strictly to the guidelines. Yeah. <laughs> they call me and you what are you telling the kids? <laughs> the truth. <laughs> That's not in the curriculum. Oh, my God. oh, we didn't talk about uh, last week. So last... Let's see. What day did we do the podcast last week? We did it Wednesday. Wednesday, I Wednesday, think, yeah. I think. We talked about going fishing. Thursday was just preparing for the install on Friday. Oh, so that's we, I forgot all about it. Yeah, we're back out in the Hamptons um, for the final let. Well, the tentative final let. It was the tentative final <laughs> leg yeah. of our installation. Um, so same story as, as the last couple times. We left here at, at 4. And we got there. Oh, I forgot all about the, the Simply Safe thing. So we're driving, oh, yeah. you know, we're like, just got to where the traffic starts to back up and uh, on Sunrise Highway. And Waze had us take the Hampton Bays exit, which is like a little little detour, I guess, save you a little bit of time. And um, I said to Rob, I said, man, we really need to start turning our compressor off at night. Because something happened, somebody's compressor, you know, went, went up in flames. Anyway, not sooner does that come out of my mouth, like literally, I'm talking like milliseconds, not yeah. even like seconds. My phone goes off, simply safe alert. Your smoke detector's been triggered. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. So then, like, right, right after that, I get a phone call from Simply Safe. Hey, this is Simply Safe. Your thing's triggered. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, we're not there. Do you want us to dispatch? Yes. Freaking send them, send them now. So we're freaking out, you know, <laughs> still driving towards the job because we don't know what the hell's going on. I'm looking at all the cameras. I don't see any smoke. You know, we don't have any cameras inside, which now makes me think that we should get one for the inside, yeah. at least a wide shot so we can see what the hell's going on. We could certainly see smoke. Yeah. Um, because you don't know, you know, if it's a false alarm or what. So... We're driving. I'm driving while looking at the, the front door camera, waiting for a fire truck to pull up. And it's probably 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. A cop finally pulls up. And uh, and I get on this, you know, because you can talk through the doorbell camera. I said, hey, I said, uh, we're not there. I said, I just unlocked the door. So he goes inside. Um, and it's like five minutes of just... You know, sheer panic. I don't know if he's in there with a fire extinguisher spraying some kind of fire. I'm like, whoa, my God. Uh, so then he finally comes back out and he's like, hey, he's like, I don't see anything, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm just going to have the fire, you know, fire department's on the way. They're just going to come check everything out. 
Oh, yeah. We got to send them some. Yeah, I forgot about that. We should probably bring it over there and deliver it in person. Yeah. That yeah, will send your wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you, know, you know she eats that stuff up. <laughs> she loves doing that stuff. Oh, yeah. And she'll, she'll give them all the praise that yeah. we're too uh, soft-spoken yeah. to, to give them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they there it was a false alarm. Yeah. Total false alarm. Thank goodness. But, you know, it was like, talk about sucking every ounce of energy <laughs> out of your body. When, we you were know. exhausted after that. Yeah, I mean, I've been we driving. We didn't even get there yet. <laughs> yeah, it was like 7 o'clock, 7 something in the morning. Like, you know, I've been driving since 4. Um, Yeah, and, the, you know, with a full day's install ahead, it was just like, holy crap, take yeah. all the wind out of your sails, like. Just all the energy of the anxiety. Um, I mean, we worked till five ten. Yeah, yes, yeah, so we got there. Um, you know, we unpacked all the stuff. We had the big foyer, yellow foyer piece with us, um, and some other stuff that we did. The little wall caps out of walnut and uh, the doors that we routed out for the hardware. Yeah, nobody was there to help us either. No, uh, the, the PM was, uh, was not there. They had some replacement, you know, peon there. A little junior guy. Who was... opened, yeah. He opened up the door, but he wasn't much, much used to us. Um, so yeah, I mean, we set the floating shelves, we set the wall units, the, put all the doors back on the vanities and put the hardware on the doors. Yeah. Installed the foyer. All those brass flat screws. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Rob. Were so, <laughs> oh, there three on each? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like 33 brittle brass screws into yeah, that, white oak. That's the thing. Each one, you, you're praying and you're, and you're clocking them too. So you're like, can I go? Do I go another half a turn? Yeah. Do I go a half turn or do I back off a half a turn, a quarter turn? Yeah, it's really. Everyone is totally nerve wracking. Yeah. yeah, because depending on where the thread starts, you know, yeah. you have to cut that first thread. You yeah, know, you might end up. Yeah, it's like, well, right. got two it, tight ones. Like this middle one could be backed off. Of. Yeah, exactly. So you're kind of playing it, you know, but, but you don't want it to be above the thing. Yeah, yeah it's. It it was really, I mean, it sounds like a simple job, but it's something you just have to take your time to do it. And no, I did the Dutch door, <laughs> and I don't know, did that have six hinges or four? Uh, four, I think. Yeah, but they were big. Oh, like, no, I think you might. I two think at we, the top, two at the bottom. I, I'm not sure if we had six. Yeah, I don't think it had six. But they were big, like yeah. four and a half or five inch leaf hinges, so they had yeah. like five screws <laughs> in each. So that's... Yeah, ten, yeah. T- forty, you know, forty yeah. screws. Yeah, um, you know, you break one of those off, it's a, it's a headache, a big headache. Yeah, and you, we didn't have any replacements either. So even if you like, you manage to get it out, drill it, whatever. There's no replacement. Yep. Um. Oh, everything went pretty smooth. Um. The, the wall units. You know, we had these brass legs that were like kind of loose, but fit into a like a platform um we ran into some issues with that because we had to get the pocket screws into the face frame because it was wall to wall so then we're like jacking up on blocks and i had my head underneath the cabinet that's only six inches off the ground you know running in the pocket screws literally with his face smashed up against the bottom of the face frame yeah trying to look sideways i'm like yeah if this thing falls it's gonna hurt <laughs> yeah it's always something something like that right yeah but the the floating shells went in real easy we had one that that potato chipped a little bit so it was hard to get it down onto the the um the hardware but once it was on there it was good the yeah. hayfla um floating shelf hardware that stuff's great yeah that's the ticket um it's a little bit a little bit tricky to drill like it's not it's not as bad as the the um like shelfology ones because they're like they're like way too long. Yeah, that, I mean you, you're always worried you're gonna come shooting out the side. Yeah, um, I feel like it's unnecessary. Like I want the the strength, but I don't need so much length on the things uh, mm-hmm. because we you know typically we build the shelves out of solid wood, um, so I don't need the the rod to go 
eight inches into the shelf. Yeah. You that, know, these probably go about five. It might be for people who do like those plywood sandwiches. Yeah. Even I mean, even then. I mean, those super rigid. Yeah. Um uh the the thing about them is you have to drill the hole and then you kind of have to drill like a little pocket on either side of the hole. Oh yeah. Um yeah. that's if you only mortise in the rail. I mean you could run that mortise deeper because you need a mortise for the rail, which is three quarters of an inch high. Um, but these were one inch thick shelves. So we don't want to make it too deep because right. then it, you know you're taking away all the structure of the of the um the back of the shelf. Yeah. You know, because you only have a, an eighth on either side. Yeah, they look good. I really like that that uh Thin. thinner look. I mm -hmm. mean, it looks very chic. Yeah. And you don't have to use that extrusion. You know, you could screw those brackets right to the wall. Mm -hmm. Tom was so cheap that he used to buy not the ones that we bought. The the ones that we bought are adjustable. He would buy the the non uh maybe they were adjustable. I forget, but he would buy the ones and then just like screw them to a piece of plywood. Yeah. Because that's strong. Yes, of course it is. A three-quarter inch thick piece of plywood, you know, oh. so you got three-quarter inch screws, you know, versus this, which is held in with, like, T-nuts in an aluminum extrusion. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you know the extrusion's straight, at least straight enough for woodworking. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you could drill it into the, it's easy to drill into the studs because you could just drill through the back anywhere where you land, you know, wherever you land. That was the other thing with like the shelfology and the shepherd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the those shepherd, holes. The shepherd, well, not so much. They had a lot of holes. Yeah, yeah, but the shelfology, you never caught a stud. <laughs> no, <laughs> and it was so thick, that, you know. Yeah, there's no drilling through a quarter inch. No steel on site. Yeah, so they had everything spaced for studs, but you know, you never, it never worked out. Yeah, the holes were 16 on center, but the shelf, you got to <clears> set <throat> the shelf according to the space. It's yeah. not like. Oh, we'll just shift it three inches to the right. It's like, no, that's not gonna work. Yeah. Um so yeah, it made it made the the horrible task of doing floating shelves a little bit better. Yeah, we love floating shelves. Yeah, we're doing more. I know. Oh god. Everybody it's like we uh, have more floating shelves in the shop that we have to install I, and then we have a job coming up where we have to build more floating I shelves. I know. What is it with those things? I don't know. I mean I guess I guess open shelving's always been a thing, but it, people used to use those ugly brackets or something. Yes, I mean, I think with the when you remove the the brackets, they become a more appealing design feature. So people go, "Oh yeah, let me have some shelves here." Yeah. Luckily, the ones that we're doing are between cabinets. Yeah. So we could just attach cleats in the shop. Yeah, I, I don't mind those. You know, you have to scribe them and stuff like that but still yeah just the back edge luckily yeah. you know as long as your cabinets are yeah square yeah so it was a good day except we got home at like 10 o'clock yeah yeah so we left at 5 10 and uh ways had us taken sunrise high like we're like i was like oh yeah well you know we'll stop and grab something to eat at this wendy's on the um Older. We, we always take like exit 70 on the lie and then we're on this one piece of road for like what five miles yeah and nothing. then we get onto sunrise highway i was just assuming that we were going to take that way home because that's the way it's always taking us home and then we're driving driving I'm like i could have sworn we should have been off this road right and um it's like oh in three miles take the exit for the robert moses parkway and i'm like <laughs> oh shit i'm like we can't take that Parkway. Yeah. Warning, Will Robinson. Yeah, no parkways in the van. So we took some whacked detour. Oh, my in God. Bay Shore. We got gas and then had to take all these back roads to get back to the LIE. Yeah. That, and it was that like, took a, like a half four, an hour to go two miles. Yeah, it was like a 40 minute ordeal, I feel yeah. like, getting from Sunrise Highway back yeah. to the LIE. We stopped at a Wendy's in Bay Shore. The kind um, where they locked the bathroom. It was a treat. It was a really nice Wendy's. Yeah. But yeah, I guess uh, uh, allegedly a rough part of town. Didn't I mean, didn't feel like it, but. No. Had a Baconator. Yeah, I had a spicy chicken sandwich. It was actually really good. 
Yeah. I haven't had Wendy's in, I don't even know. Last time I had Wendy's is when we stopped and got French fries. Those were some good French fries. That's got to be over a year ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't really eat fast food, but. No. In a pinch. Yeah, I mean, it was good. It tasted like a like a real burger, kind of. Mm. The fries were left something to be desired. But when you work, you know, we're already on hour 13 at that point. <laughs> it's all good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're no, there's no complaining about that food. No. But, like, right after I finished eating it, it started to rain. And then the traffic yeah. started to build. And it was, you know. Three more brutal hours of driving. Yeah, yeah. We went through Brooklyn. Past, uh, we did pass the the future home of Dumbo Spumoni Gardens. Yeah. Um, which yeah. we found out today. We were just is, talking to Keith about it, yeah. Is literally in my old apartment. Yeah. Um, we, I lived in this loft apartment, like a really like rugged kind of uh loft that only like musicians would pay to live in because it had no anything like no kitchen (laughs) no no heat no no it didn't have a sink it had shower like a plastic shower would out in the middle of the you know it's just propped up on two by fours against the wall no bathroom (laughs) around the shower and then had a toilet in a room so we we lived there. It was 46 Old Fulton. So as I'm reading, it's like the address for the new Spumoni Gardens is 46 Old Fulton. So they converted our old dumpy place into a Spumoni Gardens. Yeah, and it looks like they, they it's not like they knocked it down because that was the wall that yeah. they had the thing written on, right? Yeah, because oh, it's um, the auto place that it was next to. That's the wall. Oh, okay. Um, it's still there because Keith looked on uh, Google Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I could think of is maybe they took over the check cashing place that was on the other side of ours. Um, we always used to s- sit up at night thinking, I wonder if I can like get into the check cashing place at yeah, night, gotta like go through money. the ceiling and, you know. Yeah, the check cashing place got to have a lot of cash. Yeah, that was that was what I used to spend my time thinking about. There probably had some <laughs> dude in there with a shotgun yeah. or a couple of Rottweilers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was exciting news and new, uh, Pomoni Gardens because it's in a place where we could actually stop. Yeah. You get off at Cabin Plaza West and you're right there mm-hmm. and you, you know, I don't know if there's probably no parking at all, but uh, you jump out, double I'd park, drive around the block. Yeah. That'll take you only an hour. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's probably how long it'll take you to get a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but we'll get Spumoni. Because, yeah. you know, you had the pizza. You got to have the Spumoni. That's true. I did have the pizza. It was good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you'll pull over. Let me out. Do a U-turn. Just double park in front. I'll get I'll get a quarter Spumoni. Hey, pizza. If we're going, we got to yeah, get pizza, too. Yeah, we might too. as well, right? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, just enjoy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, I. you know, I'd forgotten all about it. it and it was just Friday. You know, it was like I four know. days ago. I, w- I was so tired on Saturday. Yeah. Like, I didn't even really feel recovered until, like, the end of Sunday. Like, I was just kind of like. You're feeling recovered? <laughs> <laughs> the hits just keep coming. <laughs> Got water in the basement. Yes. <laughs> I had water in the basement, but it Thankfully, it stopped. You have water in the basement. Yeah, it's probably still coming in. We had we had uh, five and a quarter inches of rain over the weekend. Yeah. Well, you know who had water in their basement? It's a good thing we moved the altarpiece. Oh, St. Anthony. They had water in their basement. Wow. So it's a good thing we moved it. Yeah, they would have had to pay us to make it again. <laughs> yeah, we can't be held liable for your uh, or yeah. your... Uh... Yeah, bad dead drainage over there. Yeah, hey. I mean, you know, big man upstairs. Is yeah. A, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's been an eventful week, hasn't it? Yeah, we're only halfway through. I know, it goes so fast, though. Yeah. So Friday, hopefully, we'll be out of our extended install. I, oh. No, I'm going to say we will be out of our extended install. Yeah, because cause we're not going back. No. 
We're not going back. Um. Yeah. So we'll wrap that up. We uh, we're gonna be building some barn doors for the Hamptons. Yeah, they're kind of like I mean, they're barn doors. They're not like uh, the usual ones. These are exteriors. Yeah, uh, exterior. We're gonna be. I think we might have talked about this. Two layers of three quarter. Uh, um, exterior grade MDF. We'll we'll yeah, we did talk about this. Yeah. We're gonna use the. I wanted to clarify. I said use the track saw to make the V groove, but we're gonna use the track saw track with the yeah. router. Right. To yeah. run the V groove. Um, you know, they're gonna be it's two two by parting doors, fifty seven by I think you're gonna end up probably about ninety four and a half high. Um they won't be too heavy. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like literally two and a half <laughs> sheets, sheets of yeah. MDF. <laughs> Probably gonna weigh like two hundred and fifty pounds each. Oh god, that exterior stuff is probably really dense, isn't it? It's super heavy. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, it's man. basically like MDF that's impregnated with this whatever resin. It's like really dark. Oh. Oh god. Yeah, fifty seven fifty seven wide. So Holy five crap. by eight. Fortunately they didn't have any five by material, so we're gonna have to yeah. We'll seam them on a V groove. Yeah, tack it on there. Um and on the back, you know, I said the back is gonna be flat. So we'll probably just do maybe just one V groove on the back or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um Ooh, doggy. Yeah. We got that for the Hamptons. The mantle we couldn't put in because they made the stone too big. Yeah. We had to bring it back and uh all got the inside. That went a lot smoother than I anticipated. Yeah. I was like, you know, something to do. And uh, Jeff goes, uh, you want to take a look at that mantle? I'm like, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yeah, I had no idea that it was going to, you know, just sometimes, you know, things go well. Yeah. That, it's, things don't go well all the time, but sometimes they do. And I was like, all right, you know, this this will work. This will support the router. Jeff says, Hey, you hear, use this bit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, let me try. And the bit was nice and sharp, yeah. you know, cause I'm thinking, Oh man, Red this, Oak is, and... uh, this is hogging out a lot of material. In one going to be chipping out. <laughs> I went nice and slow and, uh, everything was cool. Oh, it looks good. It'll, it'll be easy to put in now. Yeah. Oh, it'll just, excuse me. I almost got a face cramp on that yawn. Yeah. Um, it'll just sit right on top of the stone. It was, the stone was supposed to sit inside of the mantle and then get, you know, caulked in. Um, and I gave them the dimensions, which, yeah. which left a little room. To caulk. Right. And it was still too big. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what happened. They templated with the mantle there. Cause we had dropped the mantle off months, like yeah, whatever, months ago. dust on it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we back charged the builder a little bit. Not as much as we probably should have or would yeah. Uh, you know. We're too We'll nice. see. We haven't got paid yet. So as if anybody talks to this these people, don't tell them that we already fixed the mantle. <laughs> um, took took two and a half days to fix that mantle. Yeah. I drew up a uh a little spice cabinet. Yeah. Let me see, I'll pull it up because you haven't seen it in full. Yeah, full screen. It. Yeah, let's see it in all its glory. I just when you look on your phone, you know, you don't really get the. So it's using these little spice caddies mm -hmm. that um, came with the plain English cabinets in an in an appliance garage, which obviously they're in the way, in the way there. Um, I guess it's it's like <clears> typically <throat> they use it as like a pantry cabinet or something. So mm -hmm. they were thinking of a way to try and um, repurpose, right? Um, so my thought was this little cabinet, French cleats on the back, add a little cleat to the back of the spice things, make, makes them adjustable. So I drew like a, a walnut interior, exterior cabinet with a walnut face frame, cherry French cleats, and, uh, the, um, the spice things are painted this, uh, really nice green. Yeah. So I drew it with the door. The door is also repurposed off of the, the laundry room cabinet where we rebuilt, um, changed the layout to fix the off center window <laughs> problem. 
that was, that was really good. yeah. So we built three new doors and a and a, a, a face frame style for that. Um, so it's using that door and the spice things. So the door I I made the door green too. I I thought it looked really cool. Yeah, I love it. Um, client likes it, so we'll see. We'll put a number on that. I think we have you know we we have to build the door. All we really all we gotta do is build a little cabinet and a face frame. Yeah. I think we have all the material laying around, um, you know, left over from the uh, built-ins that we did. Yeah. Uh, the one thing is the back. I'm not sure we have a piece for the back. Hmm. Because it's like 18 by 35. Yeah. I'll have to look. Saw one piece of walnut. But the side cabinet sides are only five and three quarter. It's only like a seven inch deep cabinet. Um. Almost like a little medicine cabinet. Yeah. It'll go like over these switches that she's kind of trying to visually obscure a little bit next to the to the range. Mm-hmm. To the to the right of the range, there's no cabinetry. It sits on yeah. a, a V groove wall. Yeah, they have the place coming together. What's today's date? What do you know? Uh what, May third. Third. They're, they're, they were talking about moving in on the eighth. Yeah. I hope everything goes well. No, the barn doors are not going to be ready by the eighth. That's no, for sure. We got no. the material coming on Monday. Well, that's the garage. That's that's not even yeah, not even not the garage. It's like a pool house kind of. And it right. is the garage. It's uh, attached. Yeah, the garage is attached to like the pool house. It's a garage slash cabana. Mm-hmm. Um, is that like the pool stuff that's in there? Is that like the pool filter? Yeah, I think so. I was like, what the hell is that thing? Yeah. I was I was wondering why they put it in there. Yeah, it was like kind of like in the middle of the room. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I would think they would put that in like sort of like a shed out, like a like an adjunct, like how we had our dust collector. At, yeah, on Wilson. I think they said something about there being like a utility room in there. Um, I think it. Uh, you know, that's going to be all walled uh, off, yeah. and there'll be like a bathroom in there, and I'm sure they'll have maybe some cabinets with uh, whatever, maybe like a little fridge or something. Um, but yeah, I got the barn door track coming. It's a 19 foot track, so it'll come in three pieces, which is uh, that's work out to be six foot four. Yeah, yeah, that's that's Big. hefty too. That'll be the biggest, biggest one we've done. Right? Oh yeah, easily 19 foot. Yeah, I mean we made some doors that were over three feet wide. I think it, like uh, two doors. Forget. We did the cherry ones, and we did the um. Oh, it's blue. Um, we did the cherry ones, and we did the uh those sapili ones. Mm-hmm. The sapili ones, I think, were wider. Just texted my friend this. Podcasting. Yeah, the wife was asking me if I wanted a omelet for dinner. Oh, that sounds good. Does she know how to make an omelet though? Yeah, she's she's pretty good. Yeah. Not like I mean and it's not, not like, like a French omelet. No, yeah. no, no. It's homemade omelet. Yeah, I mean I kinda like those though. Yeah. Like better than a French omelet. Yeah. Yeah. And she'll like if I make it, you know, she always says, How come everything you make is better? <laughs> Jeez, I mean it's probably made about ten thousand meals. Right. <laughs> They call it repetition. Right. Practice, practice. makes perfect. <laughs> I mean, 10,000 is probably, it's, that's not even an, enough. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, that's, that's six months worth of brunches. <laughs> it's like, um, you try, if you do the math on like how many plates you served, I mean, it's, it's a, a m- immense number. Yeah. 500 a night, six days a week. Yeah. For how many years? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's three thousand a week. Holy cow! Right, one hundred and fifty thousand a year. Yeah, that doesn't include holidays where you do no. you, know, you turn like seven hundred <laughs> covers. Yep, I know, I know. I mean, the numbers in the restaurant game like that are phenomenal. Oh yeah. Well, we're about to tick over the one hour mark. So all right. That was a pretty good uh, episode, you know. We yeah. usually go into, I don't even know what we're going to say or do, but uh, this went well. Yeah, we had some stuff to talk about. Um, we still, you know, I know Tim from True Trade. We got to get him in. 
Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys have any suggestions of people you'd like to hear on the podcast, um, we're not doing remote guests. Yeah, you got to come to the studio. Right. So if you're going to suggest somebody and they live in like, uh, you know, California, <laughs> that's not going to work. Yeah. Unless they're willing to travel. So talk, you talk to them first. Yeah. But if you know anybody that's local to us that you'd like to hear on the podcast, um, or even just things that you want us to talk about, no mm-hmm. guarantees that we're going to talk about them because we get a lot of no. suggestions and I'm just like, meh. Mars vampires. Yeah. That we'll talk about. Yeah. But space force, secret space too, force. If it's too stiff of a topic, I'm not gonna talk about it. Yeah, it doesn't can't make any can't spin an hour out of that. No, those things need to come up spontaneously. Then it's fine. Yeah. But you can't we're gonna talk about the perils of being a small business owner. It sounds like a horrible episode. <laughs> We talk about that all day, every day. Right. <laughs> we, I woke up at 2 o'clock this morning <laughs> because of the perils of a small business. <laughs> yeah. You know, you ever wake up and it's like, you're tired, but then you start thinking about stuff. It's oh, like, yeah. like, oh, crap. I mean, it's not, it's not even in super important stuff. It's just little stuff. I had my nose in the checkbook at 4.15 <laughs> doing the taxes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is fun. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh my God, go back to sleep, please. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, we'll leave it at that. We'll see you guys next week. Ciao. As always, Rob and I thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week. If you want to help support the podcast, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Again, we appreciate your support. Thanks for tuning in.